there is more Here I am There is nothing in the way Oh, that you would find my faith An open door Oh, that you would find my faith An open door Let your presence cover me. Let your presence cover me. In your presence I receive far beyond what I Exceed my expectations. Meet me here, Holy Spirit, in this place. Let your glory lead the way. I am yours. Meet me. Yeah.
Let your presence cover me. In your presence I receive. Far beyond what I could.
See you. 
Okay, would you stand to welcome the drive, please?
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It's uh, slightly unusual circumstances, and perhaps slightly limited in some ways, circumstances in which we gather this afternoon for what is a celebration of unlimited joy, uh, the wedding of Rory and Emily. So uh, a warm welcome to, to the few of us who are able to gather here, and also to those who I know join us online, who are united with us, not just visually, but uh, spiritually and in prayer, uh, and I know holding you very much in their hearts and praying for you uh, very much uh, as we, we gather together this afternoon. Um, the Lord has blessed us with a beautiful day, um, you know, which cannot be guaranteed, and yet uh, we take it as a sign that he, he, he smiles upon us today and looks down with great favour and great blessing upon you uh, as you celebrate your wedding today. Emily and Rory, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you, together with your families and friends, as today in the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this, your joyful day. May send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, who in creating the human race willed that man and wife should be one, join, we pray, in a bond of inseparable love, these your servants who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become by your grace witnesses to charity itself, through Christ our Lord. The first reading is a reading from the Song of Songs. I hear my beloved, see how he comes, leaping on the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle, like a young stag. See where he stands behind our wall. He looks in at the window, he peers through the lattice. My beloved lifts up his voice, he says to me, come then my love, my lovely one, come. My dove hiding in the clefts of the rock, in the coverts of the cliff. Show me your face, let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet and your face is beautiful. My beloved is mine and I am his. Set me like a seal on your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is strong as death, jealousy relentless as Sheol. The flash of it is a flash of fire a flame of the Lord himself. Love no flood can quench, no torrents drown. The word of the Lord. Thanks, the response to the psalm is, how good is the Lord to all? How good, how good is, is the Lord, Lord to all? The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures? How good, How good is the Lord to all. All your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. The eyes of all creatures look to you, and you give them their food in due time. How, How good, good is, is the, the Lord, Lord to all. all. The Lord is just in all his ways, and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. How good, How good is, is the, the Lord, Lord to all.
The second reading is from a letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. You are God's chosen race, his saints. He loves you and you should be clothed in sincere compassion, in kindness and humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with one another, forgive each other as soon as a quarrel begins. The Lord has forgiven you, now you must do the same. Over all these clothes, to keep them together and complete them, put on love, and may the peace of Christ reign in your hearts, because it is for this that you were called together as parts of one body. Always be thankful. Let the message of Christ in all its richness find a home with you. Teach each other and advise each other in all wisdom. With gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and inspired songs to God. And never say or do anything except in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Anyone who lives in love lives in God, and God lives in him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my own joy may be in you, and your joy be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. It's always interesting um, weddings for a priest to see what readings a couple will choose. And sometimes couples go for really obvious readings and other times less so. Um, but I think the, the choice of the readings, are readings which you have, I know, considered very carefully. You've read through different options and you know, listened to what the Lord has said and to what has uh, inspired you and touched you. Uh, say something uh, wonderful about you, I think, as a couple and about your faith also, which really shines through. Um, the readings actually, I think, uh, will take us on a, a bit of a journey of married life, which I'll kind of uh, hopefully bring out in a moment as I speak about them. Um, but also, I think, in a wonderful way, all of these readings speak about the, the, the human love that you feel, but also your absolute awareness that this is a sharing in the love of God, the love which is at the heart of God, which he has given and planted in your hearts for each other. And that's such a beautiful thing, and we'll see that, I think, as we go. But before I um, speak about the readings that we've heard, I want to uh, share with you a reading that just missed the cut, as it were. They were very much in two minds about what to have as an Old Testament reading, as a first reading uh, for, for the wedding. And one that didn't quite make it um, was a little passage from the book of Tobit, which is a prayer given for a wedding day. Tobias and Sarah, who are getting married, uh, make prayer, uh, to God, asking for protection and blessing. So uh, rather than give a commentary on it, I will kind of read it, just very slightly adapt it to, to in this moment. You are blessed, O God of our fathers. Blessed too is your name forever and ever. Let the heavens bless you and all things you have made forevermore. It was you who created Adam, you who created Eve, his wife, to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race was born. It was you who said, 
own. So I do not take my sister, my brother, for any lustful motive. I do it in singleness of heart. Be kind enough to have pity on Emily and Rory on this day and bring them to old age together. Amen. So, um, the readings that you've uh, chosen, as I say, in some way, I think, speak about the, the different or stages of, not that there are stages of married life as such, but take us on a sort of a journey which uh, very obviously begins uh, today, but of course is precisely that, a beginning, which uh, you know, leads ultimately to the eternal happiness of heaven with the law. That's what we pray and that's what we, what we always uh, work towards. And we begin with this lovely reading from the Song of Songs, and as I say, I think the readings speak about both human love and divine love, and this is uh, very obviously true of this reading, which is really a love song. Uh, you know, it's, it's the, the love song of a, of a man, of a, of a woman rather, waiting for a husband to, or a beloved to come over the mountains, leaping like a gazelle, you know, inspired by love, coming over the hills, bounding, cannot wait to see his beloved. And he comes uh, and then calls to her, come then, my love, my lovely one, come, my dove, hiding in the clefts of the rock. Let me hear your voice. Let me see your face, for your voice is sweet and your face is beautiful. This is a love song. And yet the church has always known and understood that uh, it also speaks about that love between God and humanity as well, the, the intense love that God has for, for us, that relationship, that marriage covenant really between God and the world, between Christ and his church. And so it speaks of both these things that we, we celebrate today. But why I say I think it's a good place to begin thinking about the journey of married life is because uh, it really does speak of that kind of romantic passion, doesn't it, in a way? You hear it's come through so strongly in the reading. Um, and that line caught my attention. Uh, love is strong as death, jealousy relentless as a shale, that kind of burning passion within us, you know, that we can feel if you fall in love. The flash of it is a flash of fire, it says. You know, that kind of the sense of something powerful and wonderful. And yet it then says this. It is a flash of fire, a flame of the Lord himself. Not just a flash, but a flame which is lit and continues. A flame of the Lord himself, a work of the Holy Spirit, you would say, actually. An image of a flame of God. It's the Holy Spirit at work. And it's the Holy Spirit which has called you together. It's your vocation. This is what you've been made for. You know, it's a beautiful and a wonderful thing. So this flame of the Lord himself has been lit. Now, if we start with that, uh, that wonderful sense of romance and, uh, and the passion that goes with it, um, the second reading, the New Testament reading that you chose from Paul's letter to the Colossians, speaks about how this, uh, this love will be lived out day to day um, for, for hopefully many, many decades to come. That's very much our prayer and our wish for you. And again, it speaks of, um, it's addressed to all of us, you know, to, as members of the church, what it is uh, to, to care for one another. But to read these in the context of a marriage and to think about how you will live this in married life is, uh, you know, is very powerful, really. Uh, to, to be clothed in sincere compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive one another as soon as a quarrel begins. You know, forgiveness is always necessary in every relationship. Um, over all these clothes, to keep them together and to complete them, put on love. And I was really struck by this line where it says, let the message of Christ in all its richness find a home with you. Well, in some ways, the message of Christ, we know the message of Christ is the message of the love of God for humanity and the salvation that he brings. Um, in some ways, to a, a marriage that's really well lived, a Christian marriage really well lived in faith, is precisely a marriage in which the message of Christ in all its richness is visible. It finds a home with you, God willing, with your children, if the Lord blesses you with children, um, and with others who will look upon you as well, that they will see the richness of the message of Christ, the richness of that message of love lived out in your life. So that's the church's hope for you, for your own happiness, but also for, for all of us as well who will, uh, will know you over these years ahead and all those who you haven't yet met who will later come to share in this joy. And of course, to have faith as part of the home, with gratitude in your heart, sing psalms and hymns and inspired songs to God, and never say or do anything except in the name of the Lord Jesus. Really important to hold these things and to, you know, perhaps even from time to time to read these words together uh, in your married life and to, uh, to allow them to speak to you and you. Um, so we've heard about romance, we've heard about the ways in which that love is lived day by day in the years. Yeah, something, I think, of the, uh, the, the, the destination, in a sense, and what the Lord ultimately wants to give to you. And this brings us 
to the gospel. Um, when I was reading these, I read these words last night um, in front of the Blessed Sacrament and just thinking about uh, what they might mean in this context. And I was really struck particularly by that word where the Lord says, remain in my love. In a way, you know, in a, in a couple of minutes, you're going to stand up and make your, your vows to one another. Uh, you promise to remain in each other's love. And, and obviously the hope and the appeal that you make to each other on this day is precisely these words, remain in my love. You know, Rory makes this appeal to Emily, remain in my love. Emily to Rory, remain in my love. This appeal which you make to each other is the appeal of Christ to his church. You know, Christ the bridegroom to his bride the church, remain in my love. Uh, and he says that we do this by living the commandments, the commandments of love. I've told you this, he says, so that my own joy, you and your joy, be complete. And that's precisely uh, the, the destination, that I think, which the Lord speaks, that, uh, you know, we are called, he, he has perfect joy as one who knows perfect love and experiences perfect love at the heart of the, the Holy Trinity. Um, this is what he desires for us as well. And there's no fuller way in which the Lord gives this than in the joy of, of married life, a life well lived and really lived out of love. So uh, you enter into this today with um, that knowledge that the Lord desires that your joy may be complete. This is not the, the high point of your married life. This is oh, uh, a wonderful ascent from here to, to greater and deeper joy, we hope and we pray. The Lord wants that joy to be complete for you and uh, you are accompanied, as you know, by our support, our love, our prayers today as you enter into this commitment. Uh, we all desire this joy for you uh, and we thank you for sharing it with us today. So, are you ready? Okay, in which case, I invite you to, uh, to stand, if you would. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you through a special sacrament he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they, that, that, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Rory and Emily, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Rory, are you resolved to take Emily to be your wife? to love her, comfort her, honour and protect her, and forsaking all others, to be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. Amen. Emily, are you resolved to take Rory to be your husband, to love him, comfort him, honour and protect him, and forsaking all others, to be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God, and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church. Okay, so Rory, could you repeat after me? I do solemnly declare, I do solemnly declare that, I know not that I know not of any lawful impediment, of any lawful impediment why, I, Rory why I, Rory Christopher Kennedy, may not be joined in matrimony, may not be joined in matrimony to Emily Louise Prest. I do solemnly declare, I do solemnly declare that, I that I know not of any lawful impediment. Of any lawful impediment. Why, I, Why I, Emily Louise Prest, may not be joined in matrimony, not be joined in matrimony. to Rory Christopher Kennedy. Okay. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Rory Christopher Kennedy, do take thee, Emily Louise Prest, to be my lawful wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. Okay. Okay. 
I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Emily Louise Prest, do take thee, Rory Christopher Kennedy, to be my lawful wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God who joined together our first parents in paradise, strengthen and bless in Christ the consent you have declared before the church, so that what God joins together, no one may put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless, O Lord, these rings which we bless in your name, that those who wear them may remain entirely faithful to each other, abide in peace and in your will, and live always in mutual charity. Through Christ our Lord. Emily, I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honor you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Rory, I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honor you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So Rory and Emily join in matrimony, husband and wife now. It's a beautiful and a joyful thing, but accompanied by our prayers, prayers of intercession. Dear brothers and sisters, let us accompany this new family with our prayers, that the mutual love of this couple may grow daily, and that God in his kindness will sustain all families throughout the world. For Emily and Rory, and for their well-being as a family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. For their relatives and friends, and for all who have assisted them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all people preparing to enter marriage, and for all whom the Lord is calling to another state of life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all families throughout the world and for lasting peace amongst all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all members of our families who have passed from this world and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For the Church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. 
Yeah, opera. Lord Jesus, who are present in our midst, as Emily and Rory seal their union, accept our prayer and fill us with your spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Show favour to our supplications, O Lord, and receive with a kindly countenance the oblations we offer for these, your servants, joined now in a holy covenant, that through these mysteries they may be strengthened in love for one another and for you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in him you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature and joint heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace, so that the sacrament we celebrate may draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with the angels and all the saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. 
and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, the offering of your servants, Emily and Rory, and that of your whole family, who entreat your majesty on their behalf. As you have brought them to their wedding day, so gladden them with your gift of the children they desire, and bring them in your kindness to the length of days for which they hope. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect, Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look, with, look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep. Grant them, O Lord, and we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship 
with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray to the Lord for this bride and groom who come to the altar as they begin their married life, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, they may always be bound together by love for one another. Holy Father, who formed man in your own image, male and female, you created them, so that as husband and wife, united in body and heart, they might fulfill their calling in the world. O oh God, who to reveal the great design you formed in your love, willed that the love of spouses for each other should foreshadow the covenant you graciously made with your people, so that by fulfilling a fulfillment of the sacramental sign, the mystical marriage of Christ with his church might become manifest in the union of husband and wife among your faithful. Graciously stretch out your right hand over these, your servants, Rory and Emily, we pray, and pour into their hearts the power of the Holy Spirit. Grant, O Lord, that as they enter upon this sacramental union, they may share with one another the gifts of your love, and by being for each other a sign of your presence, may become one heart and one mind. May they also sustain, O Lord, by their deeds, the home they are forming, and prepare their children to become members of your heavenly household by raising them in the way of the gospel. Graciously crown with your blessings your daughter Emily, so that by being a good wife and mother, she may bring warmth to her home with a love that is pure and adorn it with welcoming graciousness. Bestow a heavenly blessing also, O Lord, on Rory, your servant, that he may be a worthy, good, and faithful husband and a provident father. Grant, Holy Father, that desiring to approach your table as a couple joined in marriage in your presence, they may one day have the joy of taking part in your great banquet in heaven, through Christ our Lord. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
the blood of Christ. After Emily and Rory have received Holy Communion, then um, I'll, I'll return uh, down to the front and those who are Catholic and wish to receive Holy Communion may come forward to do so. If you're not a Catholic or if you're not receiving Holy Communion for any other reason, then uh, you're very welcome if you'd like to, to come forward for a blessing. And if, if so, as you approach me, if you could just uh, place your arms like so and I'll just uh, silently say a prayer asking God to bless you on this day.
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favour what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with this one bread and one chalice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So um, immediately after the blessing, we have a little bit of legal paperwork to attend to. I'm going to avoid using the phrase signing your life away, but in a sense, that's uh, precisely what's going to happen. Um, so uh, uh, once we've, uh, after the blessing, we'll go to, to sign the registers and then I invite the rest of you to sit down and then um, we'll be able to, uh, to congratulate Rory and Emily as they, as they leave the church in a moment. But first of all, let's just ask the Lord to bless them and us on this joyful day. The Lord be with you. May God the Eternal Father keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.
So sealed at the altar and signed now in the registers. Uh, shall we stand to uh, give a joyful reception to uh, Emily and Rory, Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy, as they are now, and uh, welcome them. And as they make their way down the aisle, invite you then to, to follow them outside uh, as, they, as they go, once they've gone past.